I saw uh, Alberto the day he came in. I saw him that afternoon. I remember when I saw him in the room on the second floor. He was very short of breath. At that time, was already on a non-rebreather and having difficulty even talking. We transferred him to the intensive care unit and shortly thereafter he got intubated. Um, so when I first met him during rounds, he was already on a ventilator and I had heard his story. And, you know, obviously me and the rest of our team were super concerned, especially because of his age. He didn't have any comorbidities. Um, so that's something that kind of struck us as uh, very surprising. It just so happened that Holy Cross uh, was getting a new ECMO machine. Um, and that is a machine to either bypass the heart or bypass the lungs. And we were having training on that Friday, the day that Alberto had actually come in. And we were in the training and I kind of said to the guys, hey, listen, this guy, Alberto Perez, he's down in CIU. I have this feeling that this case is not going to go well. Maybe let's keep him on our radar to see if this is something that we could help him with. So we decided to get um, consult our cardiothoracic surgeons and get Dr. David, Dr. Melvon in, in, uh, involved in the case and um, go forth with putting Alberto on ECMO. This machine is basically uh, a miniature heart-lung machine. And what you're looking at is a, uh, a pump that pumps the blood through an oxygenator, which is kind of like the lungs. And after being oxygenated, it goes to the patient as an oxygenated, oxygenated blood. And that's basically a method of uh, exchanging gases uh, in the uh, bloodstream uh, taking away the work of the lung. So whereas a ventilator just supplements the lung and, and helps uh, move air in and out, uh, the ECMO actually takes the place of the lung. Uh, and he was able to uh, get this put on basically just in time since his uh, oxygen level was rapidly dropping in front of our eyes. Uh, he immediately uh, had marked improvement in his oxygenation. Uh, he remained stable with blood pressure and heart rate. And ultimately, he uh, got a number of treatments uh, by our infectious disease specialists and critical care specialists to try to counteract the virus. As you know, there's no real treatment. There's no official, if you take hydroxychloroquine, you'll be better. Everyone here is on hydroxychloroquine. Everyone here has had uh, anticoagulation or blood thinners uh, and still has them. Many people have had uh, what we call the IL-6 uh, medication. In other words, uh, experimental medicine that some people have had some success with, especially in Italy. And so we try it. We, we try all that as much as we can, including transfusion, sera. So if you know somebody who's had it, has done well, two weeks later, they test negative. Uh, the blood bank, uh, one blood, will uh, take a blood donation from you, spin it down, and the sera, or the serum from that blood, is then transfused into somebody who has the disease. So you're giving them the antibodies to fight the disease. Pretty much every hour we're checking blood work on him and daily x-rays, um, plus he's hooked up to all sorts of monitors and machines so that way we can see how he's constantly doing. We were able to get him off of ECMO after several weeks. Um, and then a few days later, we got him off the ventilator and he was fully awake, um, responsive, able to get up, start walking around with physical therapy. Well, we had been in close contact with his family um, and I know we were even taking his cell phone in there his, and p calling the, his sister and mother through FaceTime. So they were able to see him um, even when he was on full life support and then I know the day that we took him off the ventilator, we FaceTimed the sister without her even knowing, and she got to see him with the breathing tube out, so they were very excited. One thing that Dr. David did identify is the multidisciplinary team required to treat critically ill patients with COVID-19 in addition to our critical care uh, medicine teams and, and infectious disease teams. You know, we as surgeons participate in, in the care of these patients. Um, and Holy Cross is trying to uh, be on the lead edge of some of these new modalities of treatment. Um, Mr. Perez was also fortunate enough to re have received convalescent serum uh, with antibodies from patients who have recovered from COVID-19. 
Um, so we don't know how much that participated in Mr. Perez's recovery, uh, but certainly um, those types of advanced modalities of medical therapy uh, are, are being rapidly investigated at this time. So it was total victory for all of us because I think Alberto gave us a lot of hope during this time, especially during the pandemic, when there's nothing really set in stone that treats this virus and you know, being 39 years old without any comorbidities and our team being new to this new device, literally that day, it was just a huge win for all of us and for Holy Cross and for our nurses who work so hard and our perfusionists and our physicians. And um, he's giving us a lot of hope right now. He's now doing really well. He's walking, he's talking, he's our miracle patient. He, we tell him that, I tell him that every time I go in to see him. And um, we're just so overjoyed that we were able to help somebody who was so close to dying from this disease now with a good chance to do well. My experience with the staff has been awesome. Um, staff here has been very attentive when it comes to me. Um, they check up on me to make sure that I'm okay. Here I am today, waiting for that negative result to come back.